Welcome back everyone to the continuing C++ for Beginners tutorial set. This is going to be Lesson 26A, and it's going to be an introduction to arrays. I've been dreading teaching them probably just as much as you've been uh, dreading learning them. If you have any friends who have gone through learning arrays, they can be very difficult to learn, control, and understand. So I'm going to try showing you guys a few examples to at least get you familiar with them so you can do a quick homework and maybe play around on your own. So what an array actually is, is a container of a type that holds more than one of that type of variable. Uh, a good example of this is say I had five uh, ints that were going to be the same thing. Maybe I, I own five different properties, uh, high-rises in the city and things of that nature, and I want to know how many residents are living in each building. That would be the perfect type of situation for an array. So let's make an array called property um, tenants. And let's say that I just own five buildings, which is the number that we put in there. So what I can then do is I can specify, let's say I, I want to have uh, 10 people in my first building, 15 in my second, uh, 20 in my third, 25 in my fourth, and 30 in my fifth building. Apparently my fifth building's pretty big. Um, what we would need to do is, uh, to fill this array, is sort of simple but I'm going to break it down into parts for you. Now, with any array, the easiest way to fill it is going to be with a for loop. I'm not going to do that here, um, at least not at first. I'm going to show you guys how to set each property. So I'm going to start by saying um, property tenants one or actually, I'm sorry, but see, that's a very common mistake that I almost made right there. Now, first things first, arrays, when you set up an array of five elements, it is not one through five, the way that you might expect. The elements start at zero. Arrays are always known as zero index. And what zero index means is pretty clear. They start at zero and go up the number that we set them. So in this case it's five, so it would be zero, four. So the actual locations are zero, one, two, three, and four. Now I can go ahead and I can set them all this way and I can, you know, be very specific about it and very clear about it and make sure that each one of these is specifically what I want. But since there is some type of uh, some type of pattern to this, we can just accept that uh, and make a for loop for it. So I'm going to comment this out, and I'm going to create a variable, and I'm going to call it a. Let's just make a simple one and just call it x and set that equal to ten. I know I said I'd get into more descriptive variable names, but this is kind of an in-depth topic and I don't really want to get too, you know, completely out of hand. Um, I'm going to leave this line of code here for you guys, just up and running, uh, but comment it out so you can play around with that if you feel free. So here's what you would do to propagate an array, which just means fill up the spaces of an array, with uh, data. So we're going to do the uh, the old initialize the counter int i is equal to zero. We're not going to need it outside of this loop so we're not going to define its scope outside of this loop. We're going to do i is less than five because that's the size of the array and we're going to increment it. Set our scope operators there and um, then we're going to set the array uh, where is it property tenants of i is equal to x 
So in this case, I want to kind of go over each part of this. Now, when we normally set a variable, we would say something like property tenants is equal to x. And what that would mean is, you know, the actual variable is now equal to whatever is in x. But when we're dealing with an array, we have this little bracket and that's called a subscript. The subscript always references a point within an array. And it's somewhat dangerous because it can generate what's known as an out of bounds error. Say if for some reason my subscript is greater than the size of the array, it's going to crash the program. It's going to not resolve correctly and it's going to crash. So in this case, i is being a counter, so it's going to have the variables 1, 2, 3, 4. And then it's going to get each one of the corresponding things and set it to x. So that means each time through the loop, I'm going to have to set x equal to itself plus 5. Now to output an array, this one is pretty much the same. Well, this is going to be exactly the same for every array. So what you're going to do is you're going to take i equal to 0. There we go, I forgot the i. Um, i is less than, in this case, whatever the array's size is. So we're dealing with an array of size 5. You're just going to iterate at that point. And then just to output it, you're just going to see out the array's name. Property tenants of i. And I suppose I'll do an endl here just for readability. Now, when we compile this, what we're going to expect is for each one of these five ints to be set equal to 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. Because i is going to iterate through each one of those locations, and every time it progresses through the loop, x is going to be increased by 5. Then we're going to spit out the entire contents of the array, broken into new lines. So let's see if that works, if I can actually do something right my first try of today. Um, I see 30. It's promising. Yeah, so 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. Um, our output is pretty much exactly what we thought it would be, which is good, because if it wasn't, I was going to have to go back to CS101. Alright, so I want to cover just a couple of other things. Uh, before I have you guys do some homework for me. Now, the subscript cannot be bigger than the size of the array. And I know that a lot of you are thinking right now, well, what if I don't know how big an array is going to be? What if I need it to be, you know, something that the user chooses how big it's going to be? What if I need to uh, have it change in size? And I promise you we're going to get to that. Uh, that's going to be in a few more videos. But I also wanted to talk to you guys about a different kind of array, and it's a, a very useful kind of array, and that's the character array. Um, I'm just going to call it char name for now. Um, you can obviously call these whatever you want. And we'll take in uh, an array of 80 characters, and we're just going to initialize it to uh, a blank space. And now when we do an, just a normal C in, we can C in multiple letters of char type to an array. And that might not sound like it's very powerful, but I want to show you why it is. Um, let's see, we're going to say C out, enter your name. having just as much trouble typing this morning as always. And we're going to just see in for name. And that's really cool because there's no other type of array that's going to let you set it with that much simplicity. Um, and then you can just see out it as name as well. And so I just want to show you guys that that works before I carry on. I don't know why this excites me so much. Other than it didn't quite work the way I wanted it to. Um, I'm just going to set it equal to a blank 
uh, to an uninitialized array because apparently that was an improper initialization. So my name is Damien, and then it can spit Damien right back out. And the reason why this is exciting is because it's going to transition us very nicely into learning about strings. And strings are going to be the next thing that we cover after this. So what I want you guys to do for homework for me is I want you guys to create a couple of arrays of different types. You can use int, you can use double, you can use um, floats, you can use care, strings. I wouldn't recommend an array of strings. They're very hard to work with. Uh, you can make an array of booleans. You can make a lot of different things. Um, so what I'm going to give you guys for homework is I want you guys to make me an array uh, type of your choosing that you fill with a for loop and then output the data from it at a later point in your program. And I'll, I'll kind of toss in an extra credit here. Um, extra credit. If you make it so the uh, array is filled by CN. So that's going to be a little bit harder for you. All right, well, for now, I think that's going to cover the very, very, very most basic introduction of arrays. I hope that you guys have taken something out of this. If you have any questions, you can ask them down below. Or uh, come over to cpp4beginners.com, and you can sign up for the forums, send me a message, send me smoke signals, you know, whatever. I'll eventually <laughs> yeah, get back to you. Thanks a lot, and have a good day.